Uh, thank you. Uh, it's my great pleasure to give a talk to you. Uh, today, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, methods to deal with latent discrete, uh, latent, uh, discrete parameters in STAN. Uh, I'm not a statistician, uh, but uh, an end user of a statistical software such as R and STAN. And I'm a researcher of forest ecology, uh, mainly studying uh, species combustion or uh, forest dynamic, dynamics of forest. Today's my talk is um, based on ecology. I think uh, most of you are unfamiliar with ecology. So I'll first introduce uh, some population ecology to you. Then I'll present two examples. Uh, to begin with, uh, let me advertise the book. Uh, during this spring, and my colleagues and uh, I translated the book, uh, Bayesian Population Analysis, using Winbugs, uh, written by Mark Kelly and Michael Schaub, uh, uh, into, uh, into Japanese. Uh, this book contains many practical examples for population ecology. And life scientists and agricultural scientists and usually can collect well correct data from well designed experiments. Unfortunately, in contrast, ecologists collect field data with limited or even no experimental control in many cases because the subjects are too large or uh, too complex or too difficult to control. Uh, so many ecologists uh, use mod uh, Bayesian modeling in their studies. Uh, for this book, uh, in addition to English to Japanese translation, uh, I translated the bug models into STAN. And the uh, translated models are now in incorporated into the STAN official GitHub. I thank uh, at MCMC STAN in Twitter for inviting me and Dr. Bob Carpenter for reviewing the translated code. The examples uh, today I present are taken from the book and they are also available in the GitHub. Uh, population ecology is a subfield of uh, ecology and mainly treats uh, populations. Uh, population ecology studies changes in, si uh, in changes in population size uh, or a number of individuals of animals, plants, and other organisms. Uh, population ecology estimate uh, population, si population size, growth rate, extinction probability, and so on. Um, statistical models used in population ecology often incorporate latent discrete parameters. Uh, typically, population ecologists estimate the particular unobserved status, for example, present or absent or dead or alive. But uh, STAN does not support discrete parameters. So, uh, marginalized out is required to deal with in discrete parameters. And as a first example, I'd like to present a model with capture recapture data and data augmentation. Uh, suppose uh, you want to estimate population size or the total number of individuals in an area. Usually, you cannot Study up all the individuals because you can detect only a part of them in a single observation. Ecologists often use a capture recapture method in this case. Assume the population is closed, namely, uh, the population size is fixed, and no recruitment, no death, no immigration, no immigration. And first, 
uh, capture some individuals in the area, as in this figure. Uh, as in this figure, uh, suppose you captured nine individuals. Then mark them for identification. And list them. Next, uh, you conduct the capture again and get eight individuals. Eight individuals. And uh, And uh, four of uh, eight uh, are captured, re uh, recaptured individuals. You may repeat this uh, process for multiple times or several occasions. We call data you get this way capture, recapture data. Uh, this is an example of uh, capture, recapture data. Each row is a capture history for one individual. Each column corresponds to a single survey occasion. In this data, the first individual the first individual was captured only the third, third occasion. The second individual was captured on every occasion. And the third individual was captured on the first, on the, on, uh, the first, third individual was captured on the first occasion, but never observed, that never observed. In this data, uh, 87 individuals were captured on, the, on at least one of the three occasions. But population size is probably larger than 87 because they were probably individuals which were never captured. Oh, from this, from this data, uh, we'd like to estimate the population size. Namely, a number of individuals, including unobserved individuals, as well as the detection probability or capture probability. In this analysis, we use a technique called data augmentation. We add 150 dummy records at the bottom of the original data. The added records consist of uh, zeros. The number of dummy records is arbitrary, but must be large enough. Some of these, some of these correspond to the unobserved individuals. Now, using our data with dummies, we estimate how many data are from unobserved individuals and how many are really just dummies. Uh, this is the model formulation. The variable y, i, j is an observation of individual i on occasion day. If individual i was captured on occasion j, then the value of yi is 1. Otherwise, it is 0. yij is formulated to follow up Bernoulli distribution with parameter pfij. The parameter pfij is an active detection probability and is defined to product of uh, z, i, and p. And p is the detection probability. And GI is a latent discrete parameter and inclusion indicator. If the independent I is included in the population, then GI is one, and otherwise it is zero. In this way, 
A part of the dummy data is included in the population, and the rest is excluded. And the parameter zi is defined to follow a binary distribution with parameter omega uh, inclusion probability. And this is the bank's code of this model. Uh, we can implement it directly from the equation in the previous slide. In the last line, uh, we can uh, calculate the population size as the sum of the resident discrete state Z. Uh, next, the stand code. The stand code is a bit long. Uh, in the data block, uh, we declare uh, the given data. M is the size of augmented data set or the total number of observed and dummy records. In the transformed data block, we define two variables. S denotes an array of the row totals, and C denotes the size of the observed data set or the number of records without dummies. Uh, in the parameter blocks, we declare two parameters, omega and p, with their upper and lower bounds. And this is the model block. Uh, players are implicitly declared. If si is larger than zero, namely, the inverse i is observed at least one time, the inverse is included in the population. And in total, uh, the inverse is observed s i times out of t occasions. Thus, the log probability is calculated as the sum of uh, Bernoulli log 1 omega and Bernoulli log s i t p. And otherwise, if SI is zero, namely the individual's I is never observed, then the individual is either included in the population but never observed or is not included in the population. For former case, Uh, for homework case, uh, the log posterior uh, log, uh, log probability is calculated as sum of uh, Bernoulli log 1 omega and Bernoulli log 0 tp. For the latter case, the log uh, probability is uh, calculated as Bernoulli log 0 omega. And uh, finally, we can combine the log probability with uh, log sum x function. Uh, finally, uh, we must estimate the population size. Uh, in the bugs model, we summed the, uh, the latent discrete state, but now in stan, we don't have it. So we estimate it using a simulation. The population size is the sum of the number of observed individuals and the number of observed but included in DVRs. And C is the number of observed individuals. Then uh, we can generate the number of unobserved but included in DVRs using the binomial RNG function. And this function generates a number using binomial triads. In this time, the number of triads is M, and the success probability is the product of the inclusion probability omega and one minus P to the T power. And the results. The top row shows the results of open bugs, and the bottom shows the those of stan. The left column is 
The left column is the posterior distribution of omega, and the center is P, and the right column is the histogram of N. Uh, comparing the results between Marx and Stan, uh, you can see they are almost the same for both. And you may be interested in the differences in computing times between bugs and stun. In this model, the required time for uh, MCMC computation is uh, almost the same, but uh, the, the effective sample size of P is uh, larger in stun than, the bug, than, bug, than in bugs. At the end of this example, uh, we'll see how data augmentation works. The top row shows the results when the number of uh, dummy records is 105. And the bottom shows the, this uh, when the number is 205. As the number increases, the posterior of inclusion probability omega decreases, but the posterior of P and N are almost unchanged. In this way, we can get a precise estimation. Uh, the next example is a much state model. Uh, suppose uh, there are two sides that a species of animal inhabits. The animal can move from site A to B and site B to A. First, uh, we capture some, uh, we capture the animal uh, simultaneously at site A and B. In this figure, we capture five individuals at site A and four indivi individuals at site B. Then uh, we mark uh, them and release them. Next, uh, we conduct. Uh, next, we conduct another capture in the same manner. In this figure, we capture four individuals at site A, and three of four are recaptured individuals. At site B, we captured four individuals and two of four were recaptured individuals. Uh, this process gives us a data like this shown here. The loads uh, show the capture histories of individuals. Here, uh, the value of one denotes uh, seen at site A or captured at site A. Two, four seen at site B. Three, not seen. The first individual is seen at site A on the first occasion and not seen on the second and third occasion and seen at site B on the fourth occasion and not seen on the fifth occasion and seen at site A on the sixth occasion. And the last, the last uh, individual is first uh, seen on, at, at site B on fifth occasion and not seen on the sixth occasion. Uh, from this data, uh, we'd like to estimate the survival probability at site A and the site B. Mo movement probability from site A to B and B to A. And detection or capture probability at site A and site B. And this table shows the state transition probabilities. The parameter uh, phi A, 
is a survival probability at site A. Phi B is a survival probability at site B. Psi AB is a movement probability from A to B. And Psi BA is a movement probability from B to A. So the, prob the probability uh, that an individual uh, arrive at site A at uh, time T or occasion T is uh, seen at uh, site A and uh, is arrived at site A at time T plus one is defined as the product of phi A and one minus psi AB. The probability uh, of the probability being arrived at site A at time t and being arrived at site B at time t plus 1 is defined as uh, phi A, a product of phi A and psi AB. The probability uh, being arrived at site A at time t and date and the time t plus 1 is uh, calculated at 1 minus uh, phi a. The probabilities in the second row is uh, <laughs> defined uh, in the same manner. And the dead indiv individuals are never arrived again. And this is uh, this, is, this table shows the observation probabilities. The, pro, the parameter PA is the detection or capture probability at site A. And PB is the detection probability at site B. An individual, an individual at site A can be seen at site A with probability PA, but never seen at site B. In the same way, an individual arrived at site B is, can be seen at site B with probability PB. And dead individuals are never seen. And this is a model formulation. Uh, the discrete parameter ZIT ZIT indicates the latest state of individual I at time T. It takes the value one for arrive at site A, two for arrive at, at two for arrive, arrive at B, and three for dead. Uh, given ZIT minus one, uh, ZIT follows the categorical distribution. And the parameter is the row of the state transition matrix S indicated by ZIT minus 1. The variable uh, YIT indicates the observation of individual I on occasion T. It takes the value 1 for seen at site A, 2 for seen, uh, two for seen at B, and 3 for not seen. Given uh, G I T, Y I T for the categorical distribution, and the parameter is the row of the observation matrix O indicated by G I T. Next, I present about implementation. Uh, we define the state transition matrix and uh, the observation matrix. Uh, and we can directly formulate the model in bounds. And okay. uh, G and Y are defined to follow categorical distributions. And next, I present the formulation in Stan. Uh, this model can be regarded as a hidden Markov model. 
the latent discrete state can be very, and the observation, uh, we, we draw each observation according to the state. Thus, we can formulate the model as hidden Markov model. You can find the stands implementation of a hidden Markov model in the Stan user's manual. This code is derived, derived, derived from it. With this forward algorithm, with this forward algorithm uh, we can calculate the likelihood. Okay. It, in these uh, loops, and the uh, likelihood is calculated as a product of uh, the likelihood at the previous capture time, uh, t minus 1, and the state probability, state trans transition probability, and observation probability. And, and, okay. And last, at the last, finally, uh, they are summed up. And these are the results. Uh, the top row uh, is the posterior distributions by upper bars, and the bottom is those by star. And you can see that the two sets are this, two sets of distributions are almost the same. Uh, computing the time, uh, comparing the time in this model, uh, the, the uh, active sample size is larger in Stan. And however, uh, the required time to conduct MCMC depends on the formulations. And this is a, another example, called, another example is called uh, binomial mixture model, and estimating latent population size. Uh, using repeated observations, uh, I have uh, no. I ha I don't have enough time to explain in this model, and in this, uh, uh, I uh, implemented this model uh, or directly uh, from directly this uh, equation, uh, this likelihood. So, but uh, this implementation requires many computing time. And this is a uh, uh, comparing time and uh, uh, comparing times and this uh, implementation, implementation in Stan is uh, far less uh, effective than in uh, bugs. So uh, omission is important. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the last slide. Uh, Stan can deal with models, including discrete parameters, by marginalizing. It divides and sums up every case and then calculates the log probability. However, the formulation used are uh, less straightforward, uh, comparing the directly, uh, model, directly modeled in bugs. In addition, uh, in, uh, ineffective formulation makes uh, computation time much longer. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for attention. Is there any question or comments? あのスタンコードの方で、えー、そのエフェクティブサンプルサイズとかがオープンバグズの方と違ってるんですけれどもそれはそのコードを変えて両方ぴったりマッチするようにすることはできるんでしょうかねあえっ、えー、となんだ In this case,、uh, I use different,、uh, different algorithm for、uh, bugs and stun. And if, if, but I don't know、uh, in case that same, I use the same algorithm.、Uh, so、I'm、it's not, not so simple. I'm、uh, not having to try it.、Uh, thank you. So thank you, Ito san. <laughs>
Uh, uh. Okay, uh, I'd like to start my presentation. Um, I'd like to talk about replica exchange MCMC with Stan and R in this session. This figure is a, is a scatter plot of today's example data, uh, which columns are X and Y. The number of data points is 50. And this slide shows the assumptions. I assumed some sine curve can be fitted to this data, uh, like this, or like this, or some sign curve. Then angular rate beta is generated from half normal distribution, and uh, noise scale sigma y is generated from half t distribution. They are just very weakly informative prior, priors. And, and the stand code is straightforward. It, Model block is correspond to the previous model formulae. At the 19th line, uh, sampling statement is vectorized uh, because y and mu, mu are vector. Ah, I'm sorry. And as a block is uh, uh, just a uh, definition of uh, variables. R code is also easy. Uh, first line is just uh, reading the uh, RSAN library, and third line is uh, generated data, and uh, fourth line is uh, making a named list uh, that uh, is a uh, Need, needed uh, for a, a stand function. And I did uh, sampling in the default setting except random seed. This figure is a trace plot of the result. You can see there are four chains, uh, four chains, uh, this one and this one and this one and this one. And uh, each chain stays around each local minimum. And uh, this chain seems good. This chain seems good because log posterior is higher than um, other, other change. So you might think I should set initial values around uh, B sigma Y equals uh, 24 and 0 0.3. So uh, 24 means that uh, uh, B is near uh, 25, and sigma Y is near uh, 0 0.5. By the way, uh, the number of parameters is only two in this model, so I can visualize a quantum map of log posterior for later explanation, I visualized uh, energy divided by temperature. Uh, that is a minus log posterior except constant term. So higher log posterior means a lower E divided by T. And uh, previous model is correspond to T equals 1. And uh, here is a quantum map of uh, energy of this model. X, X axis is a parameter B, and Y axis is a parameter sigma Y. Blue means lower energy, and it is good to get more MCMC samples from lower energy. You can see there are a lot of local minima 
uh, here and here and here and yeah, these are all local minima. The previous good chain is around here. And energy is about 33. And actually, the global minimum is around here. Uh, energy is about 28. So uh, if I set initial values, I should set around yeah, here. But uh, setting initial values is generally difficult. Then I tried replica exchange MCMC, also known as parallel tempering, using a uh, stun and R. These are differences. Yukito Iba's debut paper is a good pointer of extended ensemble Monte Carlo, including replica exchange MCMC. If you can understand Japanese, movie by Yukito Iba, and these books are very helpful. I'm sorry. Okay. This slide shows the, uh, over, the overview of replica exchange MCMC when the number of replica is five. Each replica has each temperature. As I mentioned, uh, lowest temperature T1 is uh, correspond to the previous model. Apart from T1, there are four higher temperatures. When T equals T5, the quantum map is enough smooth and local minima are very few. I, I will explain the algorithm. First, do short sampling independently at each temperature. Then swap the last values of each parameter with the next replica with some probability. After that, do short sampling again using the exchanged values as initial values. And repeat them. Finally, when I collect these MCMC samples, they are what I want. Replica exchange MCMC does annealing and heating. So it is certainly difficult to go to go there from here on the quantum map of T1. But the transition through the quantum maps of higher temperature is very easy. Theoretically, replica exchange MCMC does sampling from the following joint distribution. The joint distribution is the product of these distributions, and each distribution is proportional to exponential of minus E divided by T. Here is the exchange probability of replicas. This guarantees detailed balance. And, and this slide shows a pseudo code of replica exchange MCMC. First, 
uh, set temperatures and initial values of each replica. This line and this line. Then uh, repeat this block. Repeat this block and exchange times. As I mentioned, uh, do short sampling at each temperature. Then exchange replicas with probability P. After that, update the initial values. The implementation is uh, not difficult. Stan code is a little tricky because I have to separate log posterior into inverse temperature and energy. I give uh, inverse temperature as data, uh, this one, and multiplied it, multiply it by energy in the model block. And the value of energy is almost the same as uh, the previous, uh, the log posterior of the previous model. And uh, our code is uh, about 90 lines. And I uploaded it on GIST. Uh, I want to explain it in my blog. Uh, in my blog. But, uh, OK. And the settings are here. The number of re replica, replicas is 10, and the number of re Exchange time is 100. Temperatures are like this, are like this. They are geometric progression, tohi uh, suits in Japanese. And uh, I deliberately set the initial values of each replica in the deep local minima. Look, I set iteration and warm up of each short sampling to 70 and 50. I'd like to discuss this point in the last slide. Okay. From this slide, I will explain the result. Uh, this figure illustrates the exchange of replicas. X axis is exchange time and y axis is the temperature of each replica. And cross means exchange. The frequency of exchanges seems not bad. Ah, okay. And uh, and I I want to get MCMC samples from T equals one. So around here, this replica. This figure shows a change of energy of all replicas. And then zoom it to see lower energy part. You can see replica one. Replica one is this orange shrine. And you can see replica one get out of the deep local minima and went, went to the deeper global minima about, uh, about 10 exchange time. And finally, I got a trace plot of replica exchange MCMC at T equals one. I think it was successful. Okay, and uh, I want to discuss two points. First, uh, can I reuse a warm-up result in Stan? Uh, warm-up result is, uh, means a step size and diagonal elements of inverse mass matrix. And second, uh, how to set iteration and warm-up of each short sampling. 
warm up equals 50 is uh, usually too short as total sampling. But in this case, uh, the total number of warm up equals 50 multiplied by 100. So I think it is enough. Uh, does it make sense? Okay, uh, that's all. Is there any question? Yeah, I, I, I want to answer my, my question. Oh, um, uh, answer my question. Uh, regarding the first point, we're working on it. Um, we're currently undergoing a pretty big change to the underlying code, um, but it's going to take a long time before it's ready and we can start reusing things like that. But it's something we've wanted to do for a long time. And it just, it turns out it's really tricky to get the code to do that. Um, so, so hopefully uh, within maybe a year. Um, the second one, uh, those seem reasonable for this kind of parallel tempering mm -hmm. scheme. Um, you really want to look at the effective sample size within each little window, because you basically want that 20 samples to have generated one effective sample. Once you've done one effective sample, then you can replicate exchange again. Um, so it's going to be problem dependent, but it's something you can monitor, right? You can go through the t equals one chain, and for every window between replica exchanges, just count effective sample size. And if it's roughly about one, then you know you have a decent tuning. And if it's not, if you have bad R hat, for example, you can increase the warm up, and if you need longer times, you can uh, run longer. So it's something that you can diagnose uh, in practice, but it's going to be something you're going to have to tune to every problem separately. Okay. Thank you very much. Ah, その考え方としてはシミュレーテッドアニーリングとかとこう降りていくだけなので、そこがやっぱり大きな違いだと思います。ありがとうございます。